Hello everyone, welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more. So in today's session we will be checking uh, in details about the code of ethics, the ethical principles a medical profession or a dental profession should follow. So let's go into detail of uh, ethical principles. So um, ethical principles was uh, basically formulated uh, at very recent time maybe uh, 20 or 30 years back uh, so before that uh, there were uh, many events which uh, which actually uh, accelerated the formulation of ethical principles because there were a lot of inhumane uh, unethical practices the, the medical experiments on the humans were happened so these uh, were the uh, experiments the unethical experiments which actually uh, accelerated the formulation actually uh, the ethical principles are formulated in uh, the world after the second world war uh, because of the nazi experimentation the world war two atrocities and the concentration camp experiments uh, on the humans uh, after that uh, there was a uh, nuremberg trials then this was one of the famous uh, experiment uh, done by the United States Public Health Service. Uh, it was uh, one of the renowned uh, public health service in the world. But uh, they did this experiment that is a uh, irony. So it was an uh, experiment on syphilis people uh, without any informed consent. And it was done on black people. So they were studying the natural history of syphilis. Uh, but the worst part was... The penicillin was invented by that time but nobody was treated with uh, the uh, penicillin because uh, they were studying the natural history of disease so there were two crimes happened in this study one was there was no informed consent it was particularly done on black people and the worst part was uh, they were not treated with penicillin in spite of knowing that penicillin can cure syphilis so all these experiments were lead to the formation of uh, ethical principles mm, so uh, this was uh, this guy was uh, joseph Mengele, angel of death so i was uh, explaining uh, about the various uh, various atrocities on humans uh, done by Nazi uh, people especially this doctor he was uh, very brutal in his experiment so all these uh, experiments uh, experiments uh, made him known as angel of death so all these are the historical background of uh, unethical practices made by the doctors so Nuremberg trials were mainly for the um, Nazi uh, experiments that is uh, German Nazi experiments the concentration camp experiments so after that in 1964 Nuremberg code was one of the first uh, primitive uh, structure of uh, ethical principles uh, then uh, the Helsinki declaration 1964 by the World Medical Association uh, then it was uh, revised in 2000 so there were many things in Nuremberg code like voluntary human consent minimal risk and such can be true at any time so Helsinki declaration is what uh, we follow now that is uh, any uh, human trials or clinical trials should follow the Helsinki declaration given by World Medical Assembly World Medical Association So it was revised in the year 1975, 18 and 96, 2000 and 2008. So we should stick on to this Helsinki Declaration of uh, Ethics while doing any uh, study in humans. So while coming to our country, uh, the ICMR uh, has uh, certain guidelines uh, to conduct human experiments. So ICMR actually um, 1911 it was Indian Research Fund Association so in 49 it has become uh, ICMR so ICMR is under 
Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So ICMR is the body, apex body, which regulates the uh, ethical guidelines for the research, research happening in our country. So we're well, coming to the topic ethics. It's a word coming from uh, Greek word ethos. It means character or conduct. So ethics is a branch of philosophy, uh, which is a systematic study of what is right and good with respect to the character and conduct. Or we can simply say, which deals with the examination of human conduct. So we'll come to the dental ethics. It's nothing but uh, medical. We can also call it as medical ethics. It is a moral duties and obligation of a dentist or a doctor towards his patients his colleagues and society so these are six ethical principles which is applied in medical profession or even dental profession the first one is to do good second one to do no harm autonomy justice truthfulness and the last one confidentiality so every doctor or every dentist or every investigator or every research person must follow these guidelines when they are performing when they are conducting a study on humans so just see what is the first principle that is to do good that is beneficence it says that should promote or doing good based on the principle promoting or doing good and we should always think about the welfare of patient and we should keep the patient's best interest as priority. So we should always think of be the best uh, treatment or be the best option for the patient or our subject. Second one is very important that is to do no harm. non malfeasance that is a doctor or a dentist has a duty to refrain from harming the patient. The first principle was giving the best to the patient but at the same time we should not harm the patient unnecessarily. So we should always keep our knowledge and skill to the best. We are supposed to give the best of our knowledge and best of our skills. We are not updating our knowledge and skills. We may not be able to give the best of the treatment and we might turn up to injure the patients and we should inform the patient may have been exposed to blood borne pathogen or other infectious disease and when we use unsterilized instruments and when we not properly doing a filling and carelessness which is uh, ha which happened from the uh, doctor's mm -hmm. side uh, could be uh, very bad for the patient and it violates the principle of ethics that is to do no harm we are harming the patient supposed to harm the patient so the third one is the most important uh, principle of uh, ethics which was commonly violated in the last uh, century most of the experiments were done without a consent of the participants. When we check any study which happened before 1950, most of the studies were without any consent of the participants. So autonomy or the decision making power of the participant or a patient is most important. So autonomy uh, is the most key principle of ethics. So uh, treat the patient according to patient's desire. If patient wants some, some treatment, we can give that. We cannot impose our decision or our judgment uh, on patient's uh, mind. We have to explain everything and let the patient decide what treatment he needs. So we can explain everything, the pros and cons of any treatment and let patient decide what he wants. So it's a doctor or dentist should educate the patient. Then let patient decide it. So information given should be easily understood. 
So if they are minors, we should educate uh, their parents and guardians. So if patient is not willing, even if we know that this is the best for the patient's health, if patient is not willing, we are not supposed to give that treatment because it violates the principle of autonomy. So the fourth principle is justice. Justice is fairness. We should not uh, show any discrimination between people, between our patients, between our subjects, based on their economic status, their race, their creed, their color, their sex, or their national origin. Uh, we, we have to uh, deal the patients with equal importance and with equal respect. All should get the same treatment, respective of their color, creed, economic status, their brand value, or the superiority or the inferiority, whatever. We should treat uh, all patients equal. That is justice. So the fifth one is truthfulness or veracity. So truthfulness is the sincerity of the dentist or a doctor. So dentist has a duty to communicate truthfully. We should always tell truth to the patient. And there should be always a trust between patient and the doctor. So we should not, or a dentist or a doctor should not represent the care being given to the patient in a false or misleading manner. We have to inform the patient what is happening or what has happened or what might happen. We cannot give false assurance to the patients for a temporary relief of that psychological relief of patient. So we should always be very truthful in our diagnosis and treatment. So patient expect the dentist to be truth about the information given and treatment and the prognosis. So we should always give them actual facts. We should always tell the truth to the patient. So that is the fifth principle. And the last principle is confidentiality. The privacy of the patient should be very important and should be properly maintained. It should not be discussed with other people. It should not be discussed in your friend circle, in your colleague circle, in your family circle. It can be discussed only for a knowledge sharing purpose. If you have a uh, very rare case uh, that uh, very few, very few doctors might have seen, so that type of knowledge you can share with your, your colleagues or your uh, dental fraternity or a medical fraternity, not the personal information about the patient. So uh, accept the situation where the disclosure is needed to protect against the patient itself and community. Sometimes patient's confidentiality should be uh, should be revealed, but only under control. So uh, these are the basic six principles uh, of ethics.